Welcome to another episode offered to you by the Synapse as part of our e-learning videos. With us today we have Dr. Mark Muscat, who is a specialist in public health and he's also a consultant working for the European Office of the World Health Organization. Welcome, Dr. Muscat, and thank you for accepting our invitation here today. Thank you. Dr. Muscat will be speaking to us about vaccines and vaccine-preventable diseases. He has been foremost in the work done for the eradication of the measles and also other diseases here on a European level. Um, what can you tell us about measles, doctor? Well, measles is a disease which is targeted for elimination together with rubella because the um, vaccine contains measles and rubella. Um, it's, it's delivered uh, um, as a combined vaccine across um, all the European countries of the World Health Organization, which consists of 53 member states. Um, it is a disease which carried a lot of morbidity and mortality in the past, but luckily, since the um, introduction of the vaccine in the national um, immunization schedules of uh, uh, most countries in the world, um, the disease is targeted for uh, elimination. It, it, it has the criteria of a disease that can be eliminated and eventually eradicated. Smallpox is the only disease that um, has been eradicated so far, thanks to the intensive efforts that were carried out during vaccination programs um, throughout the world. And um, the disease um, eventually was um, eradicated. Um, with, with regards to measles, we hope to achieve this uh, goal. In, in the European region, the goal is uh, 2015, this year. It doesn't seem like we are going to reach that goal because the number of reported cases are still high, but we are still holding on to that and uh, we are intensifying our efforts uh, to um, um, deal with uh, the current situation of outbreaks that are still occurring. Um, I talked about measles being a disease mm -hmm. that is um, uh, possible to eliminate. It's because it is caused by a virus that uh, affects only human beings. There's no animal reservoir that could complicate the, the situation. Um, the uh, second thing is that it is genetically stable over time. The virus does not change, not, not like certain other viruses, for example, the influenza mm -hmm. virus that changes with time. Um, you have a vaccine. This is the biggest weapon against the disease uh, that is highly efficacious and is a safe vaccine. And also, very important, you have the laboratory tools to diagnose the disease because you want to know if there are any cases that are still occurring around. You know, you, you have to have a very good surveillance system which is based also on a very good quality of laboratory techniques. But doctor, going off the tangent here, nevertheless, despite these factors, the 2015 target will probably not be reached and will need to be um, uh, revised for future years. What are the main factors that you think has led to this development? We have seen a massive drop in the number of reported measles cases in the European region. Uh, in 2007, we reached the lowest level with just over 7,000 cases across the region. Unfortunately, we did not keep that momentum and we had a number of countries that successively came up, came up with nationwide outbreaks. We had a big outbreak of over 24,000 cases occurring in Bulgaria um, with 24 deaths. And then we had a massive outbreak also in France, which um, resulted in the death of um, 10 uh, individuals. And, and other countries like the Ukraine and Georgia and the Russian Federation, and these are also big countries, and reported a large number of cases. Now, what we're seeing from an epidemiological point of view, we, uh, we saw that um, there is an age shift. We are seeing more adults, more adolescents and more adults becoming infected with measles. And this reflects the successes and failures of vaccination programs in the past. So you have these gaps. And what we're trying to do, this is, the, this is the biggest challenge, whilst reaching very high vaccination coverage, and for measles you need at least 95% of infants being born um, um, ha are vaccinated, you also need to close immunity gaps. And the immunity gaps could be, for example, the adults that we have just discussed, and the adolescents that for some reason, either did not avail themselves of the vaccine when it was first introduced into the country, 
um, many countries introduced the uh, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine in the um, in the eighties. Um, that and um, others did not did not uh, get infected naturally, so they kept they grew up without uh, you know being as susceptible to the disease. Then we have other groups that um, have problems with accessing the vaccine or. Um, uh, we have also individuals who uh, are not informed about the vaccine. We have uh, also individuals who have their own ideas about vaccinating or not the children. They believe that um, the vaccine can cause side effects um, that are serious. We have all heard about the Wakefield study and the media hype that surrounded it. And that caused a lot of doubt in the minds of parents in the United Kingdom in the late 90s mm -hmm. and um, this, has a, this has had a, a, a ripple effect throughout the English-speaking world and nowadays it's picked up also by other countries from the internet so the effect still goes on. And in fact this is something which I wanted to ask you about. What are the main challenges on a global level and in a general way to vaccination adherence? It depends on which vaccine. So if there are vaccines that are obligatory according to the national vaccination schedule, parents are willing to vaccinate their children against these um, important, they, you know, important diseases. Um, but in most countries, since the combined measles and mumps, uh, measles, mumps and rubella vaccine was introduced later on, uh, it was not enforced upon, you know, it was not a mandatory vaccine that had to be taken. So the fact that this is not enforced, people feel it is less important. Um, so it's also a perception of, um, of the vaccine uh, and the disease they, they protect. We are in a situation now that we are becoming the victims of our own success. We are not seeing the diseases that the vaccines are preventing. We don't see um, polio. We don't see uh, so, so much measles around us. It, uh, in most countries uh, in the European region. So what happens is that uh, people are reluctant or at least hesitant whether they should vaccinate their children or not. And um, we are finding more and more parents deciding not to vaccinate their children. Of course, measles is still around and we do have countries that come up with outbreaks from time to time. And this is our biggest challenge. And in fact, this is something which I also wanted to ask you with regards to our clinical practice, especially those health professionals who are with us today who are following this video. You're, you're encountering um, patients, or you can say customers because they're not yet afflicted by the disease, um, who want to vaccinate their children, who want to get the vaccine, but are reluctant. What practical tips can you give us to um, inform them and advise them on what they should do? I think. It's very important that the health worker, whether it's a nurse, whether it's, uh, it's the doctor, the GP, the pediatrician, are very well informed about the diseases and the vaccines. They should have an appreciation at least. I mean, most young doctors, like yourself, have never seen a case of measles. Um, but at least you know that it, is a severe, it can be a severe disease. It, it can cause death um, and it can affect also adults. And knowing that, you can give better advice, you know, stress the importance of the disease. Um, when it comes to dealing with hesitant parents, um, these, are the, these would be the easiest to, to deal with because you can, you know, influence. The, I think the, most, the underlying um, important thing is trust. You have to win the parents' trust in, um, in convincing them um, to uh, vaccinate their children. Doctor, you've mentioned that we've become the victims of our own success with regards to vaccination. And since we're discussing measles now, what can you say? How does this equate to our own local context here in Malta? The situation with measles in, in Malta is uh, very good because we haven't seen measles cases for a number of years. There were suspected cases, but they have never been, um, as far as I know, com confirmed that they were actually measles. But in the past, measles used to occur very often. Um, uh, affecting a large number of uh, children and it used to occur every three to four years. Um, my own brother suffered very badly from measles when he was around 16. Um, so nowadays we don't see the, the disease so much, in, also in other countries, um, but uh, in other countries that have very low or unsatisfactory vaccination coverage, measles is still around. But in Malta and in some other countries that uh, have not seen the disease um, for a long time, 
Parents forget about the importance of having a vaccine um, against uh, measles. They fear the vaccine more than the, the disease that they have never seen. And unfortunately, also because healthcare, healthcare workers, doctors and nurses, do not have any appreciation of the severity of mm -hmm. the disease, they tend to dismiss it, at, dismiss it as something that has happened only in the past and it's not around in the world. It is actually still very much alive and kicking. Um, it often happens that when uh, young students or young adults travel to um, uh, outside uh, their own country, uh, in other countries where measles is still endemic or when out outbreaks are, are occurring, they get the disease, they come home and they end up infecting other family members who are still susceptible. And we have to also remember that um, the uh, age of vaccination against measles for the first dose um, is um, around 12 to 15 months. So until that point in time when an infant can be vaccinated, they are still susceptible. And the disease is mostly severe in the very young and in the older age groups. So we have to keep in mind in a clinical context that although we do not encounter it, it is not, it is not obsolete. As a it is def definitely not absolute. The only disease that is absolute is smallpox. smallpox. And with regards to the future now, vaccination is an issue, it's a, it's a hot topic, many people are hopefully getting vaccinated and hopefully your message is going across. Do you see us as on a global level as reaching a state where one day we will have uh, gotten rid of all the vaccine preventable diseases? Oh, that is, that's a big wish. <laughs> there is um, the European Vaccine Action Plan which has just been launched um, last year at the regional committee in uh, the uh, World Health Organization European Regional Office um, Regional Committee, which is um, basically a document, a policy document, you can say, where the, um, the idea is to boost up the importance of vaccination again. We don't want to let go of that because vaccination um, is the, one of the largest uh, successes in public health that we have had so far, apart from antibiotics and, and, the, and apart from the availability of uh, safe drinking water and good sanitation. It's a major public health tool that we, we, we should not forget its importance. If we, are, if we were not vaccinated, we, were not, you know, we will have many, more, many children and adults who are suffering from some kind of complication of these diseases. And I think that's very important to keep in mind. Uh, when vaccines are produced, they are produced to initially to protect the individual, but then they become public health tools when they are introduced at a large scale. And for, for a good effect, you need to reach a high coverage. You need to vaccinate a large number of your population, your target population, um, as it were, to reach the beneficial effect. In many with many vaccines, you also have a herd immunity effect. So you, you're also protecting others who are not um, vaccinated. But the idea is to vaccinate as many as you can to give individual protection and to protect the public. Thank you, doctor, for sharing your knowledge with us, for giving us so much of your time to explain vaccination and vaccine preventable diseases. This is uh, our conclusion for today's episode. We hope that you've, you like it and we hope that you share it with your colleagues to further our knowledge on vaccination. Thank you.